What is cracking, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Jumpstart Developer Interview. I am Mega Pyroman, and today I am going to be talking with Jasper Conning from Ranimo Games. Today we're going to be talking about Awesome Not Starstorm. Why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do at Ranimo Games, Jasper? Well, I'm uh, I'm the game designer at Ranimo Games. I uh, I also founded the company together with uh, six other guys, and we uh, we met each other on a game design and development course study where we clicked right away and we made a we already when we were students we made a, a game called the blob which was later sold to thq and uh yeah when we graduated we started Ronimo, and that's where we are now and uh, on astronauts i was mostly responsible for uh, the ai of the bots but I also did level design stuff and uh, balancing and all kinds of things a game designer does. So it's you I can blame for when I'm getting dominated by bots. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's a tough thing because uh, uh, the bots are not good enough for the highest levels, but are uh, too good in the lower levels. And trying to scale them better has been a problem ever since we've uh, devised this system. That's understandable. That's understandable. So, what is Awesome Not Starstorm? Uh, so, Awesome Not Starstorm is an expansion pack for the, the base game Awesome Nots, which includes uh, three new characters and spectator mode and global chat. Some of the things will be available to everybody when we uh, finish them up, and some, uh, like the characters, will be put into a expansion pack DLC when it's out. Uh, obviously, everybody that backs us now will get the DLC, starting from the $15 tier. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's the gist of it. Uh, it's also just a new expansion to the story. There's a new uh, big space station being introduced. And if we make the, the next stretch goal, uh, we'll actually make that space station uh, one of the playable levels in the game. So you've mentioned that it is going to be an expansion pack. Some of the stuff is going to be out included out or outside of the expansion pack that everybody will get. But some of it will be actually a separate expansion. Is the expansion pack? I'm going. I'm assuming the expansion pack is not going to be free. Do you guys have an idea of how much it will be when it comes out? No, not yet. Uh, we're toying with the idea of making it free, but uh, we don't want to cut our backers. We want to make sure that the, our current backers have a good deal. So it will probably be the same or more uh, to buy the game and the DLC than it compared to what uh, the $15 tier is now. So, But we haven't decided the final price yet. And uh, we will also engage our backers on this. So, see what they think. Now, I remember when Awesome Knots originally came out, there were about six characters to pick from, and then you guys added around 13-some characters. And now this new expansion is going to be adding even more characters. Exactly. Right. How do you guys plan on balancing out these new characters compared with the other ones? If it is going to be expansion, are people who don't have access to these characters going to be playing against them? Are these new expansion characters going to be available on every platform that Awesome Knots is? Because from what I remember uh, reading somewhere that some of the characters in the PC version actually aren't available on some of the console versions. Uh, no, yeah, that's uh, a long story. We uh, the, the console version actually... We had to stop updating that version after we brought out uh, Durple and Coco. So they are the console version is still at eight characters, um, and we have no means of updating it because our publisher, well, it doesn't really exist anymore. Only on paper, unfortunately, and they did the the, the console version, hmm. whereas the PC version is all ours. So uh, it's easy for us to update that, and um, the characters will be available on PC and. Uh, they will be available on the upcoming PS4 version as well that we're uh, partnering with, with Abstraction Games on. And uh, yeah, they'll be working on the PS4 version. No direct timeline for the characters, no. So why Kickstarter? Why go to Kickstarter for Star Storm? Awesome Knots has existed for a while. I've really enjoyed what I've played of the game. It's the only MOBA game that I actually play. I've tried League of Legends. I've tried some other games like it, like Rise of the Champions. But I can never really get into those. But I really enjoy Awesome yeah. Knots. And, but, but you have a bit oh, of cool. a following <laughs> for the game. So what was the decision to actually go to Kickstarter and try to crowdsource it? Well, uh, partly because we felt we had a bit of a following so that we could 
uh, instead of going to a publisher uh, to get financing. Yeah, we really love the game uh, ourselves, and we wanna we wanna see some features that are too big to just add as an as a as a regular update. Uh, we've been adding updates for uh, for over a year now, and um, yeah, so it, it's it's doable for us to release new characters and then uh, make some skins, but. Uh, bigger stuff like spectator mode and custom games and all that kind of stuff that's just, just too big of, of an investment to make for us straight up so we we needed uh, since the experience with the, the, the previous publisher wasn't so good because they went insolvent uh, <coughs> we felt that we uh, as long as we could we wanted to avoid working with publishers and try to do everything ourselves and that's what we did and that's why we went to Kickstarter that makes sense. That makes sense. Try to go to the crowd. Like we have a bit of a backing, so we think if we do start a Kickstarter, that it will be successful. That's kind of a thing for Kickstarter, because um, uh, also a bit of a problem. If you're a known property, if you're a known developer, then and you have a known fan base, then it's relatively safe to do. But even though for us it was, uh, we didn't really know what to expect. And uh, we're, yeah, well, we're we're very happy where we're at now. But when we launched, we, we still weren't sure. But a lot of great, great initiatives and uh, uh, properties have have tried on Kickstarter and failed. So mm-hmm. there's no uh, no guarantees there. Yeah, I'm but, I'm reminded uh, of uh, Blazing Griffin, the guys who made the ship, who mm-hmm. tried to make the the sequel for the ship full steam ahead, and unfortunately, they didn't even come close, from what I remember. Ah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah, definitely a big risk, even if you have uh, a game currently released. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, fortunately, uh, we made it pretty quickly. Now, I don't know how much of Starstorm you guys have, or how much you have planned out by now, but one of the main things with Starstorm is going to be the new characters that are added. How many new characters are there, and do you have how much information do you have on these characters? Like, who they are, what they do, that sort of thing. Right. So, yeah, right now we have plans for three characters. There's a fourth one in the stretch goals, but we, we're not sure about that one yet, or we haven't designed it. And of the existing uh, three, we only have a, like a base template that we want to stick to, but uh, we want to do the design a bit more open uh, compared to the previous characters we've done. Um, so we have a guy called Tech McPain. He is like a... Um, a riff on 80s action heroes and space marines and all that kind of stuff. He's a he's a big guy with a big gun and he shoots stuff. He's uh, real simple, but should be fun. Then there's uh, Scree. He's like a, a, a techno shaman who can manipulate stuff and uh, uh, turn machines to life. I'm not sure yet how that will translate into abilities, but uh, yeah, we'll be engaging the community on that. And then we have um, Sentry X. 58. He's going to be. Uh, he, he, he was a more of a recon robot. Uh, he's fairly tanky, and um, one of his skills is um, he can uh, create a little field that uh, absorbs enemy damage, and can uh, then explode and deal that damage back to the enemy. So that should be uh, a cool dynamic gameplay dynamic. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Do you have any ideas behind the fourth stretch goal character yet, or are you holding off on that to wait and see if you actually reach that point? Yeah, yeah, we have, we actually have. Uh, well, there's 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 always a ton of ideas buzzing around in the office, but we still haven't decided yet what um, what he'll be like. Um, we might even do uh, a contest setup, kind of like we did with uh, Swiggins, the character that's now uh, upcoming. He was designed. Uh, through two contests, first one on uh, gameplay and second one on visual design. And uh, yeah, that's been a great experience and the community loves that kind of stuff. Loves being uh, involved and uh, yeah, we love working with them. That was something I was going to ask if any of the new characters would have been pulled out of the community so uh, similar to Swiggins. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's going to be any of the Starstorm characters, but uh, the experience in itself has been uh, so uh, has been very positive, so I'm I'm pretty sure that we're going to do that in the future. 
Well, when you have a community as uh, active on the forums as your community throwing out ideas all over the place, I remember I took a look <laughs> at the forums a little while ago, and they are just pages and pages of character ideas. They're, yeah. Yeah, you guys have a lot to fall back on. So, what? take me through the process of creating a character for Awesome Knots. You guys say you said that you have a lot of ideas floating around the office. How do you come up with ideas for specific characters? How do you decide this character works, this doesn't? Because something that I've really seen with Awesome Knots that I haven't seen with a lot of multiplayer games is that each character is... They're, they're characters. They have their own personalities, their own way of speech and everything. They're actually made into characters and not just a hollow husk that you play as uh yeah so usually it starts with a, a skill that we want to uh, implement or uh that that might be uh like a damaging uh skill or a or a movement skill so for instance um back when we were still designing the core of astronauts we we knew we wanted to have a flying character and um in a, a platforming uh, environment, it's cool as a flying character if you can drop uh, bombs. So that combination came about pretty quickly. And then we wanted to have another skill that would... De w when, we, when we had those two elements... I'm, I'm talking about uh, what turned out to be Yuri, the flying monkey, by the way. Mm -hmm. When we had uh, flying and bomb dropping, uh, there was this problem where Yuri wouldn't be involved, really, in any battles. He would just fly as high as he could, and then drop bombs from there. So what we did was, uh, is, is his second skill, make it more, uh, yeah, kind of force him into uh, the battle by making it a field that slows down, slows down enemies and uh, heals and, or speeds up uh, allies. And that way, <coughs> that uh, ability really pulled him into the battle back again. And yeah... When we had a, a character that flew around and dropped bombs, one of the uh, cooler ideas we had was, well, uh, in, in, in uh, nature movies, there's always monkeys into trees uh, flinging down poo. So that's, <laughs> that's kind of what they like to do. So why don't uh, we strap a monkey to a jetpack and make him, uh, um, make him the character? And, well, that's how his whole, uh, his whole design came together, actually. And, uh, yeah, for Leon, it was kind of the same. We had a stealthy character, so a chameleon made sense. And then we had a chameleon that was could be invisible. And then we thought, well, a chameleon, he is a, a chameleon. A tongue would be really suitable for a chameleon as a skill. Mm -hmm. And so that was more of a, a back-and-forth visual design and uh, game design. And that's that's happened for a lot of characters, by the way. So, how do you plan to balance the new characters with the original ones? From what I, what I remember, a game like League of Legends that has something around 98 champions to play as, I remember <laughs> hearing that the most powerful or the most OP characters are actually some of the original ones because they got better at balancing and figuring things out as time went on. How do you plan on balancing the new characters with the old characters, the old characters against the new ones? Are you going to have like community betas with Starstorm, more community um, input, or are you guys going to do just a lot of testing in-house? Well, we have a, a beta community that we send out every new character to and uh, receive feedback on. We try to play ourselves, obviously, uh, but we're no longer good enough to make a good judgment, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we balanced the origin. Yeah, painful, but <laughs> it's a painful process, to be honest. But with the console, console version, we balanced that completely in-house, and it turned out to be pretty okay. Though, in the long term, uh, people still found out pretty big imbalancements. So, for uh, new characters, we always use the, 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 the beta group. And uh, the, the group will be expanded by new uh, Kickstarter backers. Because from, um, I believe, from 50 up, you'll get access to the beta as well. So, you'll be able to check out the, the characters as they are in, uh, still in production. And uh, yeah, we've had, we've had great experience with uh, channeling all the uh, uh, usable feedback through uh, some of our more prominent community members who uh, who've helped us a lot in the past. And uh, I think most of the community agrees that the current version that's out now 
is 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 the best balanced version that's out there, and we're still improving. So I have faith that uh, that will be uh, no problem at all. I can definitely see that. The version that is out now, at least the version on Steam, it's mostly balanced. There are still a couple issues, but from at least what I've played, it's it, it's been mostly balanced, and most of the unbalanced stuff is when your team isn't really working together. Right. Yeah. That's always, uh, that's, <laughs> that's always a, a big problem with balancing as well, because um, team setup makes such a huge difference, and team cooperation makes such mm -hmm. a huge difference on, on the impact of your uh, character and of your team. And also, um, uh, what, what's a tougher problem is uh, balancing at different skill levels. So mm -hmm. we have this new character called Ayla. She is... She is hard to deal with if you're uh, relatively new to the game or uh, fighting in teams that are inexperienced. But in the higher leagues, she isn't really viable. She's hard to, to compete with or to be um, competitive with her. So that's that's tricky stuff that we keep working on. It's almost trying to like balance a Zerg Rush. You'll see it a lot in in lo lower levels because it works, but when you get to higher levels, people will know how to counter it and then it doesn't really work right. so well. And that's something that I've seen a lot of Awesome Knots. There's a lot of counters, there's a lot of things, and it's pretty easy to pick up. And the community is actually really good, unlike what other MOBAs such as League of Legends or Dota, they always get dogged for having horrible communities. But Awesome Knots, I haven't run into that at all. Which is actually really nice. Yeah, yeah, we're we're really we're really happy with our uh, our community. I mean, in game, it's uh, it's pretty obvious because uh, you you can't actually type and play at the same time because the, the movement controls are the buttons mm -hmm. on the key keyboard. But um, even in the forums, the uh, the tone is generally a lot more uh, friendly and supportive. Well, compared to my personal experiences with, with mobile forums anyway. So we've talked a bit about the characters that are going to be in Starstorm. What about the new map? What is the new map going to be like? What are some of the ideas behind the new map? Yeah, the, the core idea is going to be that there's a, some kind of pulse that will change the map periodically. So there's going to be danger areas and uh, they're going to have uh, uh, some kind of uh, element that announces that the state's gonna change and then uh, stuff will shift. That's basically what we know or what we what we have as an idea right now. So uh, uh, yeah, when we make that goal, we will actually start prototyping that idea and uh, put it into a level. We have some uh, some things already tried, but um, would the 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 design itself is still fairly open, and that's also something that we're gonna put out in the beta as soon as uh, as we have a playable version, just as we did when we made the um, uh, the Agion map, the fourth map that we added uh, about half a year ago. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're we're gonna work on with the community on that, and that's the that's a core idea that we want to have, like a, fl a big floating space uh, station battleship. There's going to be a pulse or a pulsar or uh, an engine, something, and that's going to deal huge damage periodically in uh, certain areas that you have to be careful of. Well, that sounds pretty interesting. Something that I've definitely noticed about the maps that are in Awesome Not So Far is each one of them seems to have some sort of thing associated with it. I mean, you have the the map with the eye that makes people invisible so not only can leon your chameleon character go invisible but now any character can go invisible until they attack um you also have the desert map with the sandworm in it so each map always ha seems to have its own thing to it it's none of the maps feel like reskins or just another rehashed version of a previous map and then i definitely really like that about the game yeah that was kind of um our, our goal from the outset, we knew that, especially in the start, our community would, wouldn't be big enough to support multiple gameplay modes. So what we tried to do was make a single gameplay mode and put some gameplay, as, as much gameplay variety as we could in the maps themselves. Have you guys that's ever kind of thought of maybe a map editor? We actually have a, an in-house map editor. That's It's not user-friendly enough to put out, and it's not compatible with the... The Steam version, because that's um, uh, heavily encrypted. 
But yeah, we'd love to get that in the hands of players, um, and it's going to be uh, <clears throat> it's going to be if we ever do that, there's going to be a lot of work. It's actually one of the the, the highest stretch goals. It's hard to do, uh, right? But we want to. In the end, what we love to do was uh, was make that uh, polish it up, make it available, and give it Steamworks integration, so that um, mm -hmm. people can create their own maps and share them, kind of like. Um, it works in Warcraft 3, so if you have a map and you throw a match open, players that join will automatically download it, something like that. That would so, be yeah, pretty that's cool, especially something. with yeah. uh, Steam Workshop being in with Steam, allowing anybody to just get in and create content and then upload it. Having something like that for your game will definitely help keep people interested. Right. Yeah, that's, <clears throat> that's definitely something that we'd love to do, but that's just... One of those things that's that's hard, a lot of time uh, consuming, and yeah, that's that's what we need financing for to do. So let's talk about you and Ron Romero. Ronnie, I'm sorry, I still have trouble saying this name. Ron, <laughs> Ronimo. Let's talk about you and yeah. Ronimo Games for a moment. You've mentioned that you, at least the original guys met in college when you worked on the Blob. What is it at the point that you decided that you wanted to go into developing games, that you actually wanted to go to school to learn how to do this, and that you just wanted to do it in general? <laughs> uh, well, for me personally, uh, I've, um, I think I've been dabbling in making games um, ever since I was 12, I guess. We got a an 8-bit computer, uh, ZX Spectrum at home, which was uh, already kind of dated by <laughs> by then. But I had a lot of fun trying out uh, all kinds of different stuff and trying to master basic that was installed at the moment, at the time. <laughs> and uh, ever since, ever any computer we had at the home, I, um, I've, I'd been making sprites and uh, coding and uh, doing all kinds of stuff. I never got into hardcore coding. I was also I uh, was into uh, uh, all kinds of prototyping engines. When I finished high school, I actually uh, there w there were no real uh, game educations. So what I did was join um, a college uh, and did a course on industrial design. Because it also included a lot of the same sensibilities as in uh, visual stuff and um, uh, uh, physics and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I didn't like it at all. To now, and uh, I dropped out after a few years. And, and then I got to work in a pastry bakery. Actually, I needed a job. I needed some money, mm -hmm. which I did uh, for full time for two years. And then, um, then I found. Um, this game design and development course, um, which uh, sounded ideal, and uh, back when I when I heard of it, the 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 uh, the first year was all had had started, so we were in the we were actually the second year that the study ran, so it all was all pretty experimental, mm -hmm. but also uh, yeah, a lot of people that worked on it uh, from the teacher side really gave it their best, so uh, I think. Uh, we had some benefits there, and yeah, that's uh, that's how we met up, <clears throat> and the rest, um, yeah, the rest uh, just flowed naturally. We uh, we formed the team, and uh, we in, I think already in our second year we we kind of decided for ourselves, yeah, if we uh, we're we're gonna strive uh, to make a company after we uh, after we graduate, and we're gonna we're gonna try to use the school for those goals as much as we can, which you kind of did. Uh, the Bob was a prototype project for us to to see if we how we would function as a team. And um, in our fourth year, we made, a, as a graduation project, we made a, a prototype of a 3D game that we wanted to to use as a company right after we graduated as a, um, as a pitch for publishers. That game actually never saw really saw the light of day. We released the prototype itself uh, a couple of months ago, but um, we never actually got our financing. But we did get a, a Wii development license through THQ, and uh, we decided to use that to make our own game, a Wii Wii game called Swords and Soldiers. And uh, yeah, that was it. So none of you guys knew any each other before you took the class together. Nope. 
Nope, we met at school. So you've mentioned that you worked on the blob and you worked on swords and soldiers together. How do you feel that working on those two games translated over to Awesome Knots? And what was the what was the decision to go with Awesome Knots instead of working with your 3D game that you were talking a little bit about earlier? Well, uh, both games. I before I um, before I worked worked on Awesome Knots and Swords and Soldiers. Uh, all the stuff I did in school was based mostly Twitch based. I never had any experience with tech trees or uh, RPG elements or stuff like that, balancing. Mm-hmm. And especially those skills were very useful when we started on uh, on Awesome Nuts. And that's that's something that both um, that that are strong components both in Swords and Soldiers and Awesome Nuts. Also, the the economy balance of uh, player progresses financially through. Uh, a match, so you can buy upgrades. In uh, in both games, that's a pretty strong component. And yeah, the uh, the 3D well, the 3D game was just way too ambitious for us as a studio. Um, so in in hindsight, it was uh, I think it was good for us that we never got financing for it because yeah, it would have it, it probably would have killed us right away. <laughs> do you still uh, feel like it's something that you would want to go back and do? later on actually no not really no there's a lot of uh ideas f- for new games floating around the office that i'm way more excited about than um than that game mm-hmm. yeah well thank you very much for talking to me today about awesome not Starstorm. um you guys your kickstarter's actually been doing pretty well i think you might have actually got funded by now so i do apologize for not being able to do this interview before that but there's still those, <laughs> no worries. There's still there's still those big stretch goals that you guys are looking for. So I, I can still try to help you reach those. Yeah, I hope so. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. So uh, yeah, well, we hope um, we can at least make a, a couple of stretch goals, especially seeing the uh, the the speed we've achieved so far. Hopefully, when we uh, we we did manage to to reach our base goal, as you said, um, yeah. and we're now working on. Uh, Opening our own version, which uh, allows a lot more payment options, because uh, a lot of people have been complaining that uh, the Amazon thing on Kickstarter is just way too limiting. Yeah, l- we hope that that will uh, give uh, an our impulse. Yeah, I was. And, uh, I was pretty surprised to see that you guys reached your limit, all your 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 funding goal already, because I had basically just literally contacted you. And <laughs> I was looking. I was. I, I was debating whether I would w- would interview you or not because I didn't know if you guys would be interested. But, it, but again, you were you're going to raise a lot of money, so I'm like, it'll probably take a while to do that. I might as well do the interview because sometimes when I try to do interviews, people get funded beforehand. So I thought you're going to give me a lot of money. We'll go ahead and do the interview. It'll probably take a while, and then in like two days, you raise one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so that's got to be pretty exciting for you guys. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah, we've been very happy because uh, it's all. I mean, we we see the numbers on our forums and in the game, and um, but still, it's 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 uh, we wonder. Uh, actually, before we um, before we did this Kickstarter, we did a similar thing for uh, uh, a figurine of Conk, mm-hmm. and we had a hard time reaching uh, our goal. Actually. When we uh, when we started out, our goal was a thousand units, and um, the the guy we worked with who uh, will be uh, who, who is um, yeah he's he's kind of our toy guy. He said, uh, "Well, we can we can we can also do it at five hundred, but you'll have to pay a little extra." Uh, and we said, "Well, okay, uh, sure, because we we just wanted to 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 make it happen." But the, we at the same time we were. It made us kind of skeptical uh, about our Kickstarter initiative, which in hindsight was, of course, uh, yeah, not needed at all. Yeah, I remember seeing the uh, the figurine thing on the Awesome Knots game. And I think what really helps you guys out is the fact that you are able to advertise stuff for Awesome Knots in Awesome Knots. So anyone who's playing who just starts the game, they see the little button saying Kickstarter, and like, oh, what's this about? Click on it, and then they find out what's going on. Yeah, that's a that's a really powerful tool. I, I uh, I'm I'm not really sure why uh, so f- very few other studios use that, 
But yeah, that, that, that only works because the game has actual retention and people keep playing it. Because um, mm -hmm. otherwise nobody would see it. Now, I do want to ask you, I've had a couple people uh, write some comments uh, about things on Awesome Knots. People saying that they would be interested in this idea. The idea of like an Awesome Knots Saturday morning cartoon. People have... <laughs> I don't know how much you you've heard of it, but I've been reading um, on comments every now and then the people with the way the music works, the intro for the game and everything. Have you guys had oh, yeah. any thoughts about t t going in that direction with Awesome Knots at all, or maybe uh, a movie or shorts or anything like that? Well, actually, we would yeah, we would totally love that. Uh, um, it's just not our expertise at all. We don't know where to go really. But yeah, we would we would. I mean, the the game kind of su already suggests that it's that it's that it's come out of a Saturday morning cartoon. Uh, so it'd be really cool to to, to do it the other way around uh, with this game. But yeah, as I said, we we don't really know where to go. And um, I mean, we're we're good at ga making games, so it's it's easy for us to to like go to Kickstarter and ask people for money to to make more and more game because mm -hmm. that's what we can do. Then that's that's what we're good at. But um, yeah, going out and to ask people for a Saturday morning cartoon. Well, uh, <laughs> if anyone is interested in working with us, we're we're happy and we're open. But um, it hasn't happened uh, so far. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of weird seeing people think about that because there's not a lot of games that you get people thinking about. Okay, what if we see this property as something besides a game? Whereas with Awesome Knots, people are like, okay, Awesome Knots is great, but what if Awesome Knots was more than just a game? What it, The universe is expansive enough, the characters have enough character themselves that they really pull into the idea that they were taken from something else and then a game was made out about it when it actually wasn't. Yeah, I, I actually, now that you put it that way um in a way i think it's really exciting that people see the ip that way that it that it's that it's uh, i mean that it's strong enough that that people want to see it expanded in every direction mm -hmm. i uh i'm actually kind of humbled by that thought but yeah now that you mention it that that's kind of what what people are suggesting that we do well, thank you again, Jasper Conning from Ronimo Games. We're talking to me today about Awesome Not Star Storm. It will be, uh, do you have a, a date? I know you said a little bit about a time, uh, not a time, but a price earlier around $15, uh, the main game. Uh, do you have an idea about a date when we'll be able to see Star Storm? Um, well, uh, we're probably going to be releasing the first character. Uh in a, a couple of weeks up to a month after we finished the kickstarter now that we met our goal we already started production on uh, on Ted McPain and um yeah what we what we intend to do is um uh quickly release the the DLC on Steam as an empty husk kind of and fill that up over time so that we don't have people waiting for every uh, everything to be complete first uh, but get the stuff that's ready uh, out in the open and uh, into people's hands. So Star Storm will be all of the characters and the map. It won't be like you can buy this character or this character or this character or the map. It'll be either everything or nothing, or it's going to be you can buy everything or you can only buy what you want. <laughs> uh, uh, right now it's planned as a single uh, pack. But uh, we could always, um, it, it, that's an interesting idea. We could always consider that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're going to release the base as a single pack, but uh, we could also um, release uh, separate parts afterwards uh, that people can buy. I don't know yet. Do you guys have a Twitter or Facebook that people can use to keep track of Awesome Not Star Storm? Sure. Uh, our Twitter is twitter.com slash Ronimo Games with uh, capital R and capital G. And um, our Facebook is Facebook slash Awesome Knots. Facebook.com slash Awesome Knots. All right. And is, is there anything specific you want to go over before we wrap it up? Well, the, the, the PS4 version is pretty exciting to me. I'm looking forward to playing the game on the, 
on on my TV again. And uh, we got a cool feature planned where we... Uh, so Spectator Mode is actually not going to make it over to PS4. Uh, but, um, but that's because the PS4 has all these uh, great streaming features built in. And we're going to use one of them to make a highlight reel of every game you play. So when you play a match, uh, Awesome Nuts on PS4, the, the game will keep track of your uh, greatest moments and um, turn that into a highlight reel, which you can easily share afterwards. Will you be able to control what your greatest moments are? Like, can you tell it to record something and, and it'll record that, or will it do it all automatically? Um, I think the PS4 will already uh, record everything, and what the game will do is uh, try to detect uh, what your greatest moments are. So when you make a kill, it will uh, it will pick uh, like ten seconds before, ten seconds after, uh, and use those bits to make a highlight reel. Uh, and I think you'll have the complete match uh, as uh, as an option as well. Will Starstorm come with the Awesome Knots on the PS4? Like, if you buy Awesome Knots on the PS4, will Starstorm be part of that, or will you still have to buy that separately? I think it's going to be a DLC as well, just to keep it fair for everyone. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you again for joining me. I definitely really like Awesome Knots. I love the game in itself, and I'm really interested to see what you guys do further on with Star Storm and anything that you guys do with this property or any other property in the future. Thank you again for joining me, and thank you, the viewer, for joining me for this episode of Jumpstart Developer Interview. I've been Mega Pie Man, and I will talk to you guys later.